The Pool Guy Podcast Show. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. Hi, right, welcome to the Pool Guy Podcast Show. In this episode, I'm going to go over some common filter issues you may have with your pool. I'll go over some solutions. And I know I recently have done some podcasts on high and low PSI. I'll cover those briefly here. And I'll spend more time talking about specific filter issues that happen during the season and some things you can do to address those. Pool Service Pro, open a Leslie's Wholesale account today and receive wholesale pricing on products you use every day. Leslie's Pool Supply offers convenient locations that are open 7 days a week. Another great benefit of opening a Leslie's Wholesale account is Leslie's referral program. Get referred to a customer looking for weekly pool service. Save time and money and grow your pool service route and become a Leslie's Pro. So what exactly is the lifespan of a pool filter? This really varies by brand, by size, by your particular service area as well. Some of the hotter climates, the filter lifespan, I would say, is less in the other areas where you have milder weather. Also, the filter type is a big factor. For instance, sand filters are made to endure for many years, even decades in some cases. They're that well made, whereas the fiberglass filters today are not made quite as durable and as long-lasting. In my day when I first started, I think the majority, I would say, of the filters were stainless steel there were some fiberglass filters. They had um, Compool was one of them that was making fiberglass filters back then. But most of them were the stainless steel. You had the Titan filter, which was really popular. And then the Pentair 2000 series filter, which was also equally popular. And Anthony had some stainless steel filters as well that were pretty much the standard filter type because they were extremely long lasting. If you think about it, stainless steel is something that can endure for decades. And some of you may still have some Pentair 2000 series filters on your route from the 1970s. There's not too many of the Hayward Titan filters here anymore. And I don't think there's many Anthony filters either. So it's one of those things where they made products to endure back then. I mean, if you look at anything made back in those days, it's made not to break and it's made to work forever. I remember I had a washer and dryer when I first got married way back in the 90s that was, you know, we used for over 20 years with no problem. And then you buy a new one now and you may get five or six years out of it. So there is a big difference in how things are made now to how they were made back then. So I'm going to say that on average, if you have a fairly decent sized filter, let's say you have a 60 square foot D filter, you're probably going to get a good 15 years out of that filter. Now this, again, depends on the manufacturer of the filter and the quality of the fiberglass they use. Some of the more generic filters, you're going to get less of a lifespan. And for the single cartridge filters, those particular filters don't have a lot of pressure. In my opinion, they're going to last a very long time. You probably can get a good 15 years out of those as well. And same with the four quad type filters. You don't have to replace the tank as often as the elements inside the filter. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about your filter and trouble with the filter. Not necessarily we have to cut out the filter and put a new one in, although that's not a bad idea in a lot of circumstances. One of the suggestions I would give you if you were thinking that your filter may be getting old, let's say you're having trouble with the clamp itself. Now the clamp is not super expensive, but it is pricey and sometimes the clamp wears out. A lot of times the spring barrel nut wears out. One tip to make that last longer is to get a container of magic lube or a tube of magic lube, I should say. So that tube actually has an opening that fits right in the threaded part of the spring barrel uh, on the clamp itself, or actually where the spring barrel nut goes. So it's a threaded kind of screw that's about three inches long on the clamp, so you kind of know what I'm talking about. You'll take that tube of magic lube, and I'll dip that clamp, the uh, threaded part, directly into the tube, and that gives me some lube on there. And that seems to really help when you put that, that nut back on so it doesn't strip that part. And that's usually why those clamps go bad. That particular part is not replaceable because it is welded onto the clamp for safety reasons, of course. And so when that starts to get stripped, you're going to have problems getting that nut back on and then you have to get a new clamp. That necessarily doesn't mean that the filter needs to be replaced. You can replace the clamp on it. And usually the filter is still good for many more years. But 
if you see some other problems like the fiberglass kind of shaving on top. So when you're cleaning the filter, if you're getting fiberglass shards on your in your arm, when you go to remove the lid, that's a sign that the fiberglass is wearing out, at least on the outside of the tank. The inside might be perfectly fine. But at that point, it is really irritating to clean the filter every six months or so and getting all that fiberglass in your skin. Probably not the healthiest thing either. So I would definitely consider replacing the filter if you see that the fiberglass is starting to thin out on top. Usually, again, the sun's hitting it in really hot climates, and this is what happens here in California. A lot of times the filters get old, and that's one of the effects of that. If the filter forms a crack in the top or bottom, you may want to replace the top or bottom. I mean, that's an option. A lot of times that part is pretty expensive, but it is less expensive than an entire filter. So I've had some 4000 series filters crack on top. That seems to be the Pentair filter that has the most problems, in my opinion. But of course, it could be a clean and clear FNS Plus filter with a crack as well. And should you replace just that top part of the filter or bottom part of the filter when it cracks, I would say it's time for a new filter at that point. Because a lot of times these filters are run in production at different times. It's kind of almost like if you have LVP in your house and you have a bad piece and you want to get one to replace it. They're going to put a new piece in, but it's not going to match that run of LVP that you had four years ago. A good idea to keep a box of it in your garage is what I do so that I can easily replace pieces if I need to and the properties that I have. But as far as the filter goes, it may not, the lid may not fit as snugly as the bottom because they're not made together as one component if that makes sense. So I've had many times where I've replaced the 4000 series lid because it cracked, but it didn't quite match up with the bottom. So there, there was a slight leak at the O-ring. And it, this took a little bit of ingenuity to fix this problem. So what I usually do when this happens, I'll put the red line O-ring on the 4000 series. So I'll just give you a little bit about the Pentair filter so you kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about here. The 2000 series uses an O-ring with a red line in it. So we call that the red line O-ring in, in the field. And it's a little bit thicker and it's made specifically for the 2000 series filter. But I found that if you do replace the 4000 series filter, using the red line O-ring sometimes will help stop that leak. Other times you can lube up that O-ring really good and just tighten that clamp down like crazy and that stops that little drip leak. But you get the idea that getting the top part of the filter to replace doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna solve the problem. And you may have a secondary problem with it not fitting perfectly fine on there and sealing that and you may have a little drip leak with that kind of fix. So replace that filter if it cracks. I also would replace a single cartridge filter. If it's starting to wear down to where it looks really, really old, I would say, you know, if you're having trouble getting the top off of it or if you're having trouble putting it back together, it's probably time to replace that filter. It's just pretty worn out, especially if there's a ring in the center that you have to spin to lock into place. It's one of those things where things don't last forever and you have to replace it. So that would be my kind of guideline for replacing the filter. Not necessarily having problems with your pool because that's the internal parts of the filter. So I'll address that right now. And there's what we call elements in the filter. You have cartridges for a cartridge filter, DE grids for a D filter, and sand for a sand filter. That's the elements that's used in that filter itself. And these have a limited lifespan as well. Now the sand filter, the sand may have the, a very long lifespan. It just depends on the water quality. And I'll start with the sand filter so you kind of get an idea of when you probably want to change the sand in the sand filter. You can probably go 10 years and sometimes even longer in some cases without changing the sand. I don't think it's necessary to change the sand every four or five years. And I think the sand will last a lot longer if you just maintain the filter properly, which means that if the PSI in the sand filter gets 10 PSI above the clean level, let's say on the clean level it's at 20 PSI. When it gets to 30, you backwash that filter and you backwash it for like two minutes or so, and it goes back down to 20, I would say the sand is maintained pretty well if you're consistently doing that. The problems start because people have maybe this weird rule of thumb that they heard that you have to backwash the sand filter every week, and that's just not true. If you do that, you're really going to wear out the sand in that filter, and it's not going to work effectively. And also on the flip side of that, I've had people in my group get to a pool as a sand filter, and they backwash it and nothing happens because the customer didn't backwash that filter for six months or a year. And this does happen, by the way. And that sand just becomes like a piece of cement in there. 
very hard to actually change out the sand in that case. But if you just maintain your filter, your sand filter, and keep the pool balanced, which means that you don't have a lot of algae, a lot of problems in the pool, that sand can last for a very, very long time without having to be changed out. So keep that in mind with your sand filter. Regular backwashing when the PSI goes up by 10 PSI is essential for the health of the sand filter. Over backwashing is a detriment to the sand filter and not backwashing the sand filter when it needs it is also a detriment. If you keep that in mind, you're gonna have a very long lifespan with the sand in your sand filter with very minimal problems. As far as the D filters and the cartridge filter, if you listen to any of my other podcasts, you know that I have a three year lifespan on both of these. Now the D grids used to last a long time. And again, they don't make them the way they used to. But back in the early days, you can keep the grids in there for 10 years in some cases and have no issues. But now I find that they tear much easier. The stitchings come out much easier. And it's one of those things where it could just be the manufacturing or it could just be that the pools are different than they were back then. Maybe there's more water pressure because you have water features. Who knows what the problem is? I'm kind of leaning towards the fact that they're not manufactured nearly as good as previous grids. But basically, three or four years would be the average lifespan. If you start seeing grids tearing, I would replace them. A rule of thumb is that if there's two torn grids, just replace those two for now. But if there's three or more, replace the whole set. And I think if the top manifold is getting old, you can kind of tell if it's forming like hairline cracks. If it looks really old, you may just want to put a whole new grid assembly. And this is a great way to save time and money. Basically, it's the DE grids already assembled with the top manifold and the bottom manifold and new um, nuts and new um, rods in the center, I should say. And you just pull out the old one carefully. What I like to do is I like to clean it off a little bit and I kind of get all some of the D off and then I can lift it out of there and I don't take it apart at that point. There's no need to. And I throw that whole old one away. And then you simply lube up the stem O-ring and then drop the new one into place. And you have basically a whole new filter. You have the top manifold, new rods and nuts, and you have the new bottom manifold and all new eight grids. A great way to do this in those situations where maybe the rods are rusting or if the top manifold is kind of cracked and old, and it's an easy fix. And I would recommend this to most people that have done a D grid change already once because that top manifold starts to get old. And you might as well change that after eight years or so And that way you have basically a whole new interior of the filter and you're good to go. And since I'm addressing the filters here, how much diatomaceous earth you put in is also a factor. So if you undercharge the filter, you're going to have problems with water quality and with higher pressure in the filter. You know, the DE is there for a reason. It coats the grids and allows the algae and other particles and dirt to stick to the cloth material. So if you don't have the right amount of DE on that cloth material, that dirt will actually stick to that grid or the algae will stick to that grid and it'll become more of like a, a cement when you pull out the DE, like a clay actually. So one way to tell there's not enough DE is when you clean it and you're hosing it off and it's like a really dark brown clayish material. That means that there wasn't enough diatomaceous earth on those grids and there was more dirt than DE. Now a good way to tell you have the right amount of DE is when you take that filter apart and you're hosing it off, that top layer of kind of dark brown gray will wash off, but underneath that layer is a clean layer of light gray DE. And that's a good indicator that you have the right amount of diatomaceous earth on that grid because the DE stopped that dirt and algae and whatever else was in there from coating and touching the grid. And you have that really nice clean layer of DE that's still on the inside of the grid protecting it. Otherwise the grid can get stained, discolored, and much harder to clean. So you wanna have the right amount of diatomaceous earth in there for that reason to extend the life of those grids. But of course, you're only gonna get three or four years out of them anyway, but you just wanna make sure that you have a good operating filter. A lot of times when I find a filter that's undercharged with DE, I'll clean it and then I'll put it back together and charge it with the correct amount. And by the way, you can refer to your manufacturer of how much DE to add to the pool. I have videos on it also, how much DE to put back in. And basically, when I recharge it with the right amount of DE, I noticed that the filter doesn't work quite as well because the grids have been compromised in a way. They're kind of clogged up a little bit with the dirt or dead algae that got in there. And so it's one of those things where you don't want to have your D filter compromised. You want to put the right amount of diatomaceous earth in. I think it's always better to err on the side of too much DE than too little DE. But then in the same respect, too much DE can also cause 
problems in the pool. So you want to get the right amount of diatomaceous earth in the filter and refer to the filter's manual for how much diatomaceous earth to add to the filter for the optimal amount. Now, of course, DE filters have to be backwashed on occasion and how much DE do you add to that? And again, this is not an exact science, but the good news is when you backwash a DE filter, not all the DE comes off the grid. So even if you put too little in there, it's not really a major factor, but I always like to put two or three pounds back in depending on the DE filter size or about half of the DE that I use, especially if I'm doing like a two minute backwash. Again, I have a lot of videos on my channel that focus on backwashing and how much DE to add back to it. I would refer to those rather than here because those go into a lot more detail about backwashing and recharging a DE filter. Now for cartridge filters, again, they don't make things the way they used to. And I think having a three year kind of reset on a cartridge filter is ideal. You would wanna change those cartridges every three years. I always mention this exception. The exception would be the Stay Right System 3 where you have the large, two large cartridges basically in there, one large circular one and one large regular cartridge. These seem to last a very long time. The pleats are a lot deeper and they're really expensive to replace anyway. So I would say that you probably want to get at least six years out of those, five or six years, but eventually they do wear out as well and you would want to replace those cartridges. But for the standard quad four cartridge filter, every three years, and I would mark it on your customer's invoice or even on the filter, the date you installed the cartridges with a Sharpie. And then three years from that point, you want to replace those cartridges and then put new cartridges into that filter. And that's kind of how you want to keep that cartridge filter running well. The cartridges aren't super expensive and it's something that you can do instead of a filter cleaning. And I should say this, and I would time any of these grid replacements and cartridge replacements with your filter cleaning time. And if you charge for filter cleaning, instead of charging for the filter cleaning, you would charge for the install of the grids or the cartridges in that filter. That way you don't lose any money, and you don't miss any beats. One thing that can happen, and it can be irritating to customers, is when you clean the filter and then two months later you change the cartridges or change the grids. Not a good policy because you're charging them kind of double, you're installing them, and then you clean their filter recently. So time these things to where you're breaking down your filters. I do my filters twice a year. I do them in September, early October, if I can avoid that, September is probably the best. And then I do it in March and April. And at that time, I'll change out the filter cartridges or the DE grids in lieu of cleaning the filter. It's a great way to make everyone happy. You have the filter with new elements. The customer is happy because you didn't charge them for cleaning, you just charge them for the install. And it's a win-win at that point. So time that so it coincides with the filter cleaning. I think that's an important fact. And if you do your pool yourself, make sure you mark on your filter when you change your cartridge out on the four quad type cartridge filter. Now for the single cartridge filter, of course, that's not going to last three years. And you'll know your pool and you'll know specifically how often to change out that cartridge filter. My rule of thumb is basically if I have a single cartridge filter and I clean it, and I get back there within two weeks and the pressure's back up by, you know, six or eight parts per PSI. I know that cartridge filter is no longer working properly and I'll change it out. And of course, you can kind of set it for like six months or eight months or nine months or one year. However you want to set it, you would definitely want to change that cartridge filter out on a regular basis. The last thing I'll mention is that you would want to have a working pressure gauge on your filter. I can't tell you how many times I've taken over a new account. I get there. The pressure gauge has no plastic or glass on there. The needle's all bent. It looks like it was, you know, somehow just hit with a baseball bat sometimes. And this is not the kind of pressure gauge you want on there because the pressure gauge is a indicator of the filter health, basically, and the pool health. So if, you're, if you don't have a working pressure gauge, you definitely want to replace it and put one on there because how are you going to tell when the filter's dirty or when there's something impacting the impeller, causing it to have low PSI? unless you have a working gauge on top. And with that said, if you have a variable speed pump and you're running it on lower RPMs, and I just got this question on YouTube not too long ago, that when he's at 18 or 1600 RPMs on his VS pump, the pressure gauge is like near zero. And that's perfectly normal because you're not really pulling a lot of water from the pump into the filter when it's at 1600 RPMs. And then he mentioned that when he turns it to 3,800 RPM, 30, 3450 RPMs, the PSI goes up to 20, which is typical of a four quad type cartridge filter. So he's perfectly fine there. 
So if you wanted to get the exact clean marking under your filter, and I recommend doing this as well, each filter has a slightly different clean PSI. So when you change out the four grids and you change out the cartridges, go ahead and take a Sharpie and then have that pump running at 3450 RPMs, which is a full speed on a variable speed pump. You want to put a little mark on that pressure gauge where that is. You can also turn it if it's a Pentair filter gauge is a clean and dirty arrow built into the gauge. You can turn that. I believe Jandy has that also. And you can turn that so you can kind of get the clean and dirty mark. But if you don't have that clean and dirty mark on the actual gauge itself, you can take a Sharpie and just mark where that is. So most of the time it's going to be at 20 PSI. Put a little mark with a Sharpie on the gauge. And that way you know that when it gets to 30 PSI, you have to backwash that with a D or sand filter. And with a cartridge filter, you definitely have to take it apart and clean it. Some cartridge filters start at 15 PSI. So when it goes up to 25 PSI, take that apart and clean it. So the pressure gauge is crucial in marking it when the filter is clean, especially with new elements, is ideal. And it's a good way to, in to have an indicator of when that cartridge is wearing out or when that D grids, when that D filter needs to be cleaned and when the sand filter needs to be backwashed. Looking for other podcasts, you can find those on my website, swimmingpoollearning.com. On the banner icon, click on the podcast and you'll see 1,500 podcasts drop down for you to listen to at your leisure. And if you're interested in the coaching program that I offer, you can learn more at poolguidecoaching.com. Thanks for listening to this podcast. Have a great rest of your week, and God bless. Real quick, if you're not using pool service software, try Skimmer free for 30 days at getskimmer backslash poolguy. Again, that's getskimmer backslash poolguy. Skimmer, everything you need to run your pool service business all in one app. Pool Service Pro, open a Leslie's Wholesale account today and receive wholesale pricing on products you use every day. Leslie's Pool Supply offers convenient locations that are open 7 days a week. Another great benefit of opening a Leslie's Wholesale account is Leslie's referral program. Get referred to a customer looking for weekly pool service. Save time and money and grow your pool service route and become a Leslie's Pro.